the no. thing. Oh, too much. <laughs> they really just inflate it back. Uh, mm -hmm. Did they just send somebody down there? I don't know the procedure, but I just know they reinflate it. Not quite, Pat McAfee. Let's talk. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Someone sent me this clip from the Pat McAfee show the other day where he was talking about how they treat and manage a collapsed lung like Drew Brees had. And no real hate on Pat here. He's not a doctor. He shouldn't know. But they completely misexplained here what they do. And so I'm going to clear it up in this video by reacting here to what he said and fill in the gaps to explain to you guys how they really treat this with Drew Brees' collapsed lung. Collapsed lung? How many lungs you got? Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. So we're off to a good start. Pat McAfee's right here. We have two lungs, a right and a left, but within each we have multiple lobes. On the left side, it's pretty easy. We have a left superior lobe, and then we have a left inferior lobe. On the right, a little more complicated, but still pretty easy. We have a right superior lobe, we have a right middle lobe, and then we have a right inferior lobe. So three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left, still two lungs overall. What's the deal? Everybody talks like, oh, punctured lung, not that big of a deal. Collapsed lung, not that big of a deal. It's like, what happened? Yeah, usually a collapsed lung is not that big of a deal, but they can develop something called a tension pneumothorax where that pressure builds up so much in the lung that it can actually push on the blood vessels of the heart, impairing your cardiac output and can actually be fatal. So typically, yeah, collapsed lungs, while very painful and needing management, aren't always life or death, they can develop into a tension pneumothorax, which actually can be fatal. So they have to be taken very seriously nonetheless. It's a couple, they work together. Oh, sorry, tagged in each other? Or I tag, believe so, tag yeah. One in, yeah. Tag in. Good point here too, the lungs do work together. There are people who can have a lobectomy where they essentially remove one of those lobes of the lung and you can still get enough oxygen perfusion to your blood. So yes, when someone has a collapsed lung, they can still get enough oxygen for kind of vital functions, but you're gonna feel very short of breath and it's gonna be super painful. One huh? picks up the slack. And when the one collapse. collapses, how come they, do they, do they just send like people go over there and just like take a plunger and like bring oh, it yeah. back? They, like, inflate, how, they oh, yeah. inflate it. How's it work? How do the lungs? All right, so they do not just reinflate the lung whenever somebody has a collapsed lung. And this is kind of the biggest misconception here from his video. Ah. We went to high school with a kid who had a uh, collapsed lung in a game and they get Also note here, I've had multiple collapsed lungs. So I've kind of been through this in terms of the symptoms and how they treat it. So I have a little bit of experience, unlike a lot of the other sports injuries I talk about. Inflate it and then you're out for what? Wait, you blow it up like send a balloon. Down, like, a, like a bed, mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. an air mattress. Exactly. And you got somebody just stepping on it. <laughs> yeah, it was like in Space Jam, right? What? And then yep. they check the PSI and then they puncture it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> no. the thing, oh, too much. All right. So I know Pat's kind of joking here, probably intentionally, but might not actually understand how we actually treat these. No, you don't go in and reinflate the lung when the lung collapses. What you do is you suck the air out of the space around the lung, which allows the lung to reinflate itself. Our lungs are surrounded by this layer of tissue called a visceral pleura, and then there's a parietal pleura that's on the inside of the chest wall. There's a potential space in between those two linings, and that potential space is actually at a negative pressure with normal breathing. When you have a collapsed lung, what's happened is there's air that's escaped the lung or gotten in from the outside of the body that goes into that potential space and the pressure goes up. As the pressure goes up, that increasing pressure actually pushes the lung inward. So it's not really that the lung collapses, so to speak. It's more so that the lung is getting pushed to collapse because of the pressure in the chest building up from excess air. What they actually do to treat these is if it's an emergency type of situation, They'll take a needle with an empty syringe and they'll stick that into the chest to allow that pressure to blow out and escape from the chest wall to let the lung reinflate. When somebody puts a chest tube in, it's trying to drain the air from the chest cavity. So you're not putting air back into the lung to pump it back up like an inflatable bed. You're pulling the air that's got into that space out so that the lung can reinflate itself. They really just inflate it back. Mm -hmm. Did they just send somebody down there? I don't know the procedure. So again, no, they don't send anything down there. They come in from the outside. They put a needle in. They put a tube in. That allows the air to escape, which lowers that pressure and lets the lung reinflate. So you don't inflate the lung. You pull the air out of the chest cavity. Oh, fun. Hey, did you ever have a collapsed lung? No, I th I've had a bruised lung, I guess, but no. It, you know, what is a bruised lung? Excuse me? Bruised lung is a lung contusion from any sort of trauma, just the impact on the lung. The lung is tissue like anything else that can bleed and become bruised. So it doesn't actually rupture or puncture in the sense that air can escape into the chest cavity. You just get a bruise on the lung. How big your lung too? I guess big. Uh, 
No, the lungs are not this big. The lungs fill up your entire kind of chest cavity. And here we can see the side on the right, the left, and they really do sit just beneath those muscles and the lining of the rib cage, filling up that entire chest cavity. When you breathe, your whole chest wall is actually expanding and contracting. So your lung doesn't just sit here and shrivel up and then get real big again. Everything kind of moves in and out together. That's the end of the segment from the Pat McAfee Show. Hopefully this was a little bit educational here. No offense to him. There's no reason to expect that Pat McAfee is gonna know how you manage and the physiology of a pneumothorax, but hopefully this allows you guys to understand a little bit more. Remember, they don't pump air back into the lung. They pull the air out of that space surrounding the lung. That's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.